When you start architecture school, you'll hear people talk about scale and scale rulers or scale rules. Most of the time they will assume you know what this is and they won't tell you how to use an architectural scale ruler. So you might spend weeks not knowing what a scale ruler is and even if you do, what the heck you're supposed to do with it. The thing is, it's one of the most critical drawing tools you're going to use. Hey, I'm Liz Watt. Welcome back to Archimash, the best place for aspiring architects to learn faster and easier. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you exactly what scale is, what a scale ruler is, and the different ways you can use a scale ruler. Let's get started. Before we consider a scale ruler, it might be helpful to understand a little bit about scale. So what is scale? Scale in design refers to the enlarged or reduced representation of a real full-sized object in a drawing or a physical model while retaining the proportions of the original. So in architecture, we generally reduce the scale of something and bring it down to something much smaller rather than enlarge it. A scale drawing or model is like taking the original and shrinking it down proportionally because you're not going to be able to draw a building at the exact scale that it's going to be built. We can work in either metric, which is millimeters, centimeters or meters or imperial in feet and inches. Today, I'm going to talk in metric, but if you go to the link in the description, it'll take you to an article which will give you a table in both metric and imperial and help explain this a lot better. It's important to note that architects generally use millimeters when developing their drawings, not centimeters or meters. With metric scale, we pronounce scale as one, which is the number on the left, is two, which is the colon, 50 or 100 or 500 or 200, which is the number on the right. The number on the left of the colon refers to one unit on the page as a representation of real life. The number on the right of the colon refers to how many times larger the real life measurement is. So for example, a scale of one to 20 means that one millimeter on a page represents 20 millimeters in real life. What is important to note is that when a single line or length is drawn on a page, the real life line is 20 times longer or whatever the scale is. When a square or an area length times width is drawn on a page, the real life area is 20 times the length and 20 times the width. So 20 by 20 is 400 times larger. When a mass or a volume, which is length times width times height is either drawn three dimensionally or created as a physical model, the real life volume is 20 times the length and 20 times the width and 20 times the height, 20 by 20 by 20. So eight, thousand times larger. So certain scales are used to produce different drawings. The first type of scale we work with is a location plan which will be at 1 to 5,000 or 1 is to 1,000. From the location plan we zoom into the site plan which will be at a scale of 1 is to 500 or 1 is to 200 or sometimes 1 is to 250 and that shows the building outline. Then we zoom into floor plans, elevations and sections at 1 is to 100 which show, show us the configuration of rooms in a building. We zoom in one more time to room plans and interior elevations which would be at 1 is to 50. We look at wall details at 1 is to 20 or 1 is to 25. We zoom into joinery details and things like kitchen cabinets and bathroom cabinets at 1 is to 10. We zoom in again at 1 is to 5 for details of how different materials come together and occasionally we may use a scale of 1 is to 1. A scale ruler is used to help understand the proportions of the drawing or model representation as a proportion of the real life object. The first thing you must consider in choosing a scale ruler is which type of unit of measurements you're using. So this will vary on depending on which country you reside in. Imperial units refer to feet and inches and metric units refer to millimeters, centimeters and meters. The second consideration in choosing a scale ruler is which scales you'll be using. This will depend largely on your profession or discipline. So engineering scales include some odd scales such as 1 is to 75, 1 is to 300 or 1 is to 400. Urban scales might include just large scales like 1 is to 10,000 or 1 is to 20,000. Architectural scales include scales such as 1 is to 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 
200, 500, and more rarely one is to 25 or one is to 250. As an architecture student, you should use the standard scales in the presentation of your work and avoid unusual scales such as one is to 75, one is to 300, or one is to 400. So once you have the correct scale ruler with the correct metrics and the correct scales, how do you use it? So there are two ways to use a scale ruler converting measurements from real life down to a scale drawing and converting measurements on a scale drawing back to real life. So to create a drawing from a real life object, we first determine the scale we're using for a particular drawing. Say we're drawing a bathroom layout at one is to 50. We measure the bathroom in millimeters. Say it's 3,600 by 2,400 millimeters, 3.6 by 2.4 meters. We can try to convert from 3600 millimeters by dividing by 50 or we can use a scale ruler. We take our scale ruler and flip it to our one is to 50 scale. We can see that a thousand millimeters or one meter in real life is equivalent to 20 millimeters or two centimeters on our scale ruler. We can see that 3600 millimeters in real life is equivalent to 72 millimeters on our scale ruler. You can see how all this swapping between meters, centimeters, and millimeters is confusing. So we use millimeters. If you're drawing with a computer-aided or CAD drawing program, you'll be drawing at a scale of one is to one and then representing your scale on a page. However, in the early stages of design, it's important to start developing your ideas with old fashioned pencil, pen and paper. During this stage, you should have a scale ruler in your hands so that you're thinking about the measurement of something in real life and can immediately draw it to scale on the page. You do not have to keep converting real life numbers to your scale and you reduce the risk of error. Just use the scale ruler as if you're drawing certain dimensions. Just use the scale ruler. The other way we can use a scale ruler is to convert the measurements on a drawing into real life. The first thing we must check is that a drawing has been printed at the correct scale. If not, we must determine the scale within the drawing. Once we know the drawing scale, we can use a scale ruler to determine the measurement shown on the drawing and convert it in real life. So say your drawing is a floor plan at one is to 100 and we wanna know how big the internal bathroom is. We take our scale ruler and we flip it to one is to 100 scale. When we measure the internal walls of the bathroom, we can see that the drawing is 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters or 3.6 meters by 2.4 meters in real life. Before we start a drawing, we must choose our scale and use it consistently and rigorously. We must also clearly indicate the scale on the drawing so our viewer knows how to measure. So there's three ways to represent a scale on a drawing. Number one is showing a human body on a drawing immediately gives the reader an indication of the scale. So this is more commonly used in the concept schematic and design development drawings and not construction or working drawings where we must be a little bit more accurate. Number two is a written scale. So within each drawing title on a drawing page or sheet, you can include the scale of that drawing or detail. This is written as one is to 20 on A3 or one is to 100 on A1. So this is fine if you know the drawing has been printed to scale, but if for example, an A3 drawing is printed on A4, there is no way of knowing the correct scale. When we know the scale of the drawing is correct, we can use a scale ruler. So the third way we represent scale is with a scale bar. These represent a printed scale, like the scale on a scale ruler, and immediately allow the reader to compare the scale within the drawing to a defined scale on the scale bar. We can use a scale bar like a scale ruler when the drawing has been printed to an unusual scale. Now one of the trickiest things is converting between scales. So for example, you may be asked to convert a one is to 500 site plan to a one is to 100 floor plan or a one is to 100 elevation to a one is to 10 detail. Sometimes the maths is easy enough, divide or multiply by 10. If not, I've created a simple drawing scale conversion sheet that allows you to simply and easily convert between scales. You can check out the link in the description. So most of the time you should be able to use your scale ruler 
but this will help if there's some tricky conversions. CAD or computer software programs are great and while you're designing and documenting you may come to rely on these a lot. This means you'll be thinking at a scale of one is to one. However, the minute your drawings are printed to scale on a page, you need to be able to read and interpret them. You'll need to be able to use a scale ruler when sitting face to face with anyone to develop concepts and design and discuss your work. This will include working with your tutors, clients, your boss, other consultants or builders or tradespeople on a building site. You will not have the opportunity to go back to your computer to open up your software and check the measurements. You need to be able to recognize what things look like on paper at different scales. Your scale ruler is one of the most useful tools of your trade. You must start learning to use it now. So if you have any questions or thoughts about scale, scale rulers or architectural drawing or equipment, please let me know at archimash.com forward slash ask Liz. If you want to know more, make sure you consider subscribing to this channel because I have a ton of great content to share to help make learning, studying and practicing architecture easier and faster. If you haven't already, make sure you download and print the drawing scale conversion sheet. It's a simple one page printout that will quickly tell you how to convert from one scale to another. And again, the link's in the description. While you wait for the next episode, make sure you check out some of my other work here or at archimash.com. That's it for today. I hope you found it helpful. Have a great day and I will see you next time.